Truckers XTV on air. We are now live in three, two, one. What's good, you guys? Shiraco Zix, we talked to you right now. Welcome back to another The Great Ace Attorney Chronicles. In the previous episode, we completed episode 5 of the Ace Attorney Adventures. Today, we're going to go into the Ace Attorney Resolve. If you're happy to this episode, make sure that like, subscribe, and push the channel. Standing here in the bright sunshine, looking out over the vast ocean, those days in London seem like a dream. But I do miss my time in England's vast capital. You know, he's flourished into a truly wonderful lawyer. I've no doubt that at this very moment, he's fighting some noble cause in court. Forgive me for taking so long to come to visit you. My life has been such a whirlwind since I returned. And no one could have predicted what has happened. Just two months after arriving home. I find myself with awful crime. It's the lady from before! So I came here today to ask something of you. Tomorrow, I shall be standing in court. For the only time in my life. As a lawyer. It's the lady who got away! Yo! So please, I ask for your guidance. I thought that was her dad's grave, to be honest. Not gonna lie. What's going on? The adventure of the blossoming attorney. Yo! <clears throat> the one that got away has returned, but dead? Oh, anyway. 13th August, we ended off like in February, I think, or no, April, April, yeah. We ended off in April 15th, and now we're in August 13th. Here I am again after nine months, the Supreme Court of Judicature of Japan. I feel so nervous, but I must deal my nerves and find a way to compose myself. I thought he was dead in the, in the beginning. I was like, oh, heck no. But no, it was Kazuma's grave. Though it's kind of sad either way, but it just it just led me to think it was the father because we ended off her going goodbye, and the illness just came out of nowhere, and I'm like, damn, there's no way they kill him off right away. But I have no idea what the hell I'm saying. But we're back again. Ah, oh, good you're here. It doesn't it doesn't do for a lawyer to be late. Oh yes, um, good morning, sir. I already recognize you. You cut a fine figure, counsel. Well, you look as white as a sheet, and those white eyes aren't doing you any favors either. Oh, dear. Truth is, I'm so incredibly nervous, I feel utterly nauseated. I must wish that I'd never been born. Goodness, not the sort of thing a father hopes to hear from his daughter, I must say. Eugene Mikatoba, professor of medicine at the Imperial Yume University. A man who earlier in life traveled to Great Britain to study at the latest advances of forensic medical and science. And of course, my brilliant father. Um, excuse me? Not Maya? Would I be correct in thinking that you're to be my lawyer in court today? Hmm? Oh, um, yes. Yes, that's right. Miss. Well, I, um, I want to thank you for agreeing to represent me. I swear, I swear on my life. It's a complete fabrication, the whole thing. 
Ray Membambi, Mem Mem born the same year as I, and my greatest friend. Though unusual for a woman in our time, she works at the University Research Laboratory helping my father. And sadly, she's a defendant in today's trial. Accused of committing a truthfully awful murder. Murder? Murder? Myrtle? What the heck? Are you feeling alright? Since we started talking, you seem, well, to have become a little flushed. Oh my, um, well, um, it's just that... You look so gallant and dashing. Sorry? And when I fall into your intense gaze, it... Well, it makes me feel rather bashful. I'm gonna see all those fan fictions later on. Goodness, I don't think she knows. She hasn't realized who I am. Ha 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 ha! It would seem our little plan for this trial is going to work. Oh, what? What do you mean, Professor Mikotoba? If even your best friend can seize with a disguise, I think we can relax. Disguise? Yes, I've never tried dressing this way before, of course, so I wasn't sure how convincing it would be. But this does make me feel a little relieved, as you say, Father. Father? What? Is that... Is that you, Susato? I'm sorry I didn't say sooner, Ray. It's just that... No! What are you doing? What's going on? What's... What, what the... That varsity uniform, the varsity cap, the varsity cape, the varsity badge! Look at you! You look for all the world just like a student of the Imperial Human University, a male student! Is this was back in the day of women's rights still not a thing? I'm so glad you think so. It means all my preparations have been worthwhile. I'll work at four this morning to make a start. But I don't understand. Why are you dressed like that? Well, you see... It was the only way. The only way she could be permitted to the Supreme Court to take on your defense in this trial. My defense? So I had to be talking to a guy then? For sure. I'll do it. Never before in my life have I felt so frustrated at having been born into this body. Courts in Japan are barred to women. So it's before women's rights. We're not even allowed to set foot inside the courtroom. Despite the fact that the laws of the land apply to all people, male and female alike. But women are forbidden. Just for today, I'll be leaving my true self at the courtroom door. So that I can act as your lawyer. Oh, Susato, you go to such lengths for me? Of course, you're my greatest friend. I just worry that I shan't be the lawyer you deserve. Shan't not. Oh no, I have complete faith in you. Ray. It's so strange though. I mean, you're such an accomplished judicial assistant already. And yet just because you're a woman, what a wretched reason. I mean, why shouldn't you be allowed in court? You're so gallant and dashing. Um, Ray? Please don't look at me like that, with those flushed cheeks and dotting eyes. Oh, I'm sorry, it's just... You really do look so dashing. Yes, you mentioned that once or twice. Ha ha ha, you should be pleased. I mean, you look convincing as a man. I'm pleased, I think. It certainly helped to bolster my confidence today. Ray. You're managing to put on a brave face in all this, but I can't see through it. I've noticed how your shoulders are slumped, and how you're trembling ever so slightly. Excuse me. Susato, you do believe me, don't you? I didn't do it. I couldn't have. I mean, murder? Of course. You have nothing to worry about. Your conscience is perfectly clean. Isn't that right? Yes. Yes, it is. Perfectly clean. I have absolutely no doubt in my mind about your innocence. Which is why I'll stand by you until the bitter end in this trial. Whatever happens, I'll always be on your side. Because that's what it means to be a defense lawyer. That means so much to me, Susato. Defendant, counsel, court is about to begin. Proceed to the courtroom at once. You shall go at him at once, Ray. If you're late, the judge won't hesitate to pronounce you guilty. Oh. Stand aside. I don't think I ever seen her run so fast. 
Well, Susato, you should at least surprise your father. Going to such legs to be admitted to the courtroom and with no prior experience of being a lawyer. There was simply no other way. That's all there is to it. But father, you haven't told her, have you? I mean, I'm right in assuming that Ray doesn't know how it came to this. Yes, quite right. I've kept that information from her. I could only worry her if she found out that no other lawyer would agree to take her case. I didn't want to burden her with that. And is it true? The reason why every other lawyer is refusing to take the case is because of the, the treatment? Is it because of who the victim was? We should be cut making a move now, too. As you know, law isn't my field, but I'll do what I can to support my student. Thank you, father. Talking like a guy, I'll do it, chief. I'll do it. I'm Susato Mikotoba, a judicial assistant. Eight months ago, I accompanied a student of law on a study trip to Great Britain. But two months ago, due to unforeseen circumstances, I found myself back in Japan. How many times have I wished that he was here? I wonder. Still, I have no choice now but to steal myself for the trial ahead. Wish me luck, Naruhodo san. Are we facing the freaking glasses freak again? Bring it on! 13th August, 9 o'clock AM. I wish it be 10. Hey, it's the same guy! Oh yeah, we cut his head off. This court is now in session to hear the trial of Ray Mimbambi. Yeah, it, he did cut off his hair, so... The prosecution is re fully ready to proceed, Your Excellency. Talk like a guy. Defense counsel, are you ready? Yes, Your Excellency, we are ready. Re ready I don't know. Ah, uh, yes, counsel. According to your registration details, your name is, uh, Ryotaro Naruhodo? Is that correct? Ryotaro? Sorry? Oh yes, I have come up with a suitable male name for you for this little venture. So I'm afraid to say I'm still be put down the first name that's run to mind. Well, counsel? Uh, yes, that's right, that's me. I'm, uh, I mean... I don't know what voice I'm giving. Yes, I'm Ryotaro. He who has vowed to uphold the pride of the great Naruhodo clan. I don't know, I'm just gonna go with my regular voice, I don't care. Ah. Uh. It seems Ryotaro may need to consider how better to uphold his manly act first and not overdo it. And those wild wide eyes aren't doing you any favors either. Just relax and listen. Naru Hodo. A fresh face in the courtroom, if I'm not mistaken. But the name Naru Hodo, would that perchance be? You may be thinking of Ryunosuke Naru Hodo, currently in Britain as part of a study program. This is, um... His cousin! That's right, Ryutaro here has been standing in the province of what was called to be the capital for this trial. I assure you in matters of law, his knowledge rivals that of any Tokyo pre-eminent lawyers. Any of them! <laughs> what a pitiful situation. Having been rejected by every lawyer in the capital, the accused has been called in country boy? How dare you! Sisara-san is every bit gallant and dashing as any of your Tokyo attorneys. I won't have you making fun of her. Her? Oh, um, uh... Please be, please be careful, Ray. <laughs> what an unrefined tomboy we have here. I wonder, is your gallant and dashing lawyer up to the challenge and defending you? With his wide skittish eyes very much suggest that he is not. Uh, I'm so nervous. Now that I'm standing in his shoes, I'm starting to understand what Naruhodo-san goes through. Like it or not, eyes are won't to flit. What? The case to be held on this day a matter of great significance of our national interests. In fact, it would be reasonable to assume that the outcome of this trial may well affect the future of our empire. Just like the trial nine months ago. And yet for proceeding of such importance, we have this unknown Yoko by the dock. Dear me. Huh, perhaps this will be an appropriate moment for me to assess the defense. 
to determine whether you are sufficiently com competent to practice on this courtroom. Nine months ago, when a certain other Naruhodo stood where you're standing now. Yes, we know the story. Kill is isn't there an option just to skip through this? The same judge tested him as well. And even though he was just a student at the time, not even a law, he passed the test with flying colors. Do we have the option off too? We're a trained and experienced judicial assistant like you see. We have the option for the things off as well, right? Good. So it stays the same. So, counsel, do you consent to answering some simple questions? All right, it's time to prove myself. Yes, your excellency. But please do make them simple. Very well, to start with, you will state the name of the victim. Phew, that is simple. I couldn't forget that if I tried. Uh... What's the matter? Now that I'm standing in his shoes, I'm starting to understand something else now that the sun goes through. Like it or not, minds are won't to blank! It's not surprising, really. It's your first time in this position, and in that guise... Even a bright spark like you is bound to flicker and falter a, li a little under the circumstance. Oh dear. Oh dear, this is this moment failure. Don't fret, you need only use knowledge you gain as a judicial system to upgrade the problem. Of course, the court record. Yes, the answer will be amongst all the key information about the case in the court record. That's right, just use R to open the court record. Yeah, 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 let's get it through. Move it! Alright, check the court record with R. I'm waiting, counsel. What is the name of the victim in this case? Giselle Brett. I never thought we'd hear that name again. Yes! Oh, great. The name of the victim who lost her life in this case is Miss Giselle Brett. Oh, I'm mixing up the male voice. Giselle Brett. A name that will never be forgotten in the courtrooms of our country, I'm sure. I thought you were second to Shanghai. Correct. And being a member of our Empire's judiciary, you will be well aware of the significance of that name. So, let me pose another simple question. As you know, Miss Brett was a visiting student from the Empire of Great Britain. Why then is her name in that in the library associated with our own Empire's judicial history? Obviously, you won't have forgotten the case from nine months ago, but if it's proving hard to recall finer points, everything you'll need is the court record. Obviously, I still remember. That was the start of everything. Giselle Brett, behind the woman's student persona, was the face of... A killer. Nine months ago, a physics professor of medicine at the Imperial Yumei University was killed, and the culprit was Giselle Brett. Yes, she was a killer. At the time, our country had just signed a new treaty with the Great Empire of Britain, and it was in the midst of the delicate diploma diplomatic situation that the incident occurred. An Englishman, Dr. John H. Wilson, no, was shot dead. I believe he was associate of yours, Professor Mikotoba. I don't even know who was talking to. Yes, I was indebted to that man. He'd been my mentor when I went to London to study forensic medicine. Indeed, it was I who invited him to Japan as a visiting professor at the university. Naturally, the murder of an Englishman of our soil was a matter the government wished to resolve rapidly. Indeed, it was, which is why a secret trial was conducted here at the Supreme Court. A student of the Imperial Human University was arrested of suspicion of murder. A second year English language student by the name of Yunosuke Naruhodo. With the help of his best friend, a student lawyer, the accused conducted his own defense. And exposed the despicable crime committed by Mr. Zell Brett. Miss Brett eventually admitted to her crime. However, one question about the motive that drove her to d take Dr. Wilson's life. 
She gave no satisfactory answer before the trial reached its conclusion. Immediately after the trial, the British government brought its consular jurisdiction into play. We were unable to sentence Miss Brett according to our empire's laws. It was decided that she would be removed to Shanghai, China instead. Why Shanghai? There's a British consular court there. Correct. I oversaw the negotiations personally. The date of her transfer to Shanghai was finally settled upon only last week. All that remained of our empire's obligations was to see the woman safely on board our ST ship. And yet, the very day before her departure, the English woman was killed. Only the day before? Ugh, day before? That will do. I'm satisfied that the Council for the Defense is sufficiently capable of representing the defendant. Oh! Thank you, Your Excellency. Over the first hurdle. Now, summary of the incident, if you please. Prosecutor Aoichi. As is your wish, Your Excellency. Next episode. The repugnant crime took place on the 11th August in broad daylight. Yo! Where? On the outskirts of the Imperial capital, under a bright blue sky, a secluded bathing spot by the sea. It's actually a chill place. The incident occurred inside a small beach hut, erected by for bathers to rest or change their clothes. Yo! The cause of death was a single stab wound to the posterior abdomen that pierced the victim's lungs. An injury which proved fatal. What's with the pen? There were two persons along together in the beach hut at the time of the victim's death. Miss Brett in her bathing attire and the accused, Ray Membami. Accordingly, there can be no doubt of the accused's guilt, especially when we consider she had a powerful motive. The police arrived rapidly at the scene and probably arrested a young lady. Well, that extraordinary description of events leaves me somewhat lost for words, I must say. That's certainly true. The prosecution summary was full of words that raised an awful lot of questions. As a lawyer, I really ought to pick up the prosecution counsel on what he said about. Doesn't matter which one? Doesn't matter. You're clearly exaggerating. The powerful one is a blatant overstatement. Tut, tut, tut. Is the Yoko boy using long words he doesn't fully understand? I beg your pardon? No matter, let us put this accused, shall we? Membami san, you are a research assistant at the Imperial Yume University, I believe? Yes, I am. I'm working with Professor Mikotoba in his laboratory at the moment. I can confirm that. The defendant is an excellent assistant with a strong sense of responsibility. Fascinating to hear. Now, another question. Prior to your work with Professor Mikotoba, whose research were you assisting then? Oh, um, well, uh, I was studying under Dr. John H. Wilson. Dr. Wilson? The visiting English professor who was murdered by Miss Brett nine months ago. So the motive is that she killed her for the professor's death. The accused had deep-seated respect for her former mentor, Dr. Wilson. Is that not true? Yes, Dr. Wilson was a wonderful man. Interesting. Then tell the court what deep-seated feelings you had towards the English woman who killed him. Well, obviously I was filled with hatred for what she'd done. A powerful hatred. Oh no, Ray, be careful what you're saying. Uh, the motive was revenge. Plain and simple, Your Excellency. Hmm. Well, it was clearly a trap all along. How wicked of him to use Ray's undying respect for her former mentor against her like that. I must find out more details of something we can use to bolster our defense. So all, all of them. As a lawyer, I really ought to think of blah, 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 blah. Um, if I may, Prosecutor Aoichi? What do you want, you fresh-faced young Yoko student? I wonder, could you explain, please, you mentioned a bathing spot? 
Ha! Huh, my apologies. Clearly my modernity has confused the poor country bumpkin simple mind. Bathing spots are the very latest trench in health practices from the West. We are told that bathing in the water of the ocean is curative, therapeutic, and excellent for the skins. No, that's not what I mean, meant. I was referring to the fact that Miss Brett had to all intents and purposes been found guilty of murder. Why would a known criminal have been relaxing by the sea? For all time's sake, I believe... Sorry? Miss Brett was to the bar Shanghai the following day. Her final wish, as it were, was to enjoy a day at her country's wonderful coast. And the British Embassy put extreme pressure on our government to comply. But, but on what grounds would we agree to such a request? Because, as usual, our government is honored with the stand-up to foreign powers. In matters of diplomacy, diplomacy, it seems we don't even have the courage to decline the whims of a known criminal. criminal. But don't look at me, Professor. It was the government who granted the permission, not I. In any case, it was decided that with the dedicated detective on duty, nothing could go wrong. But in fact, a murder took place. I said don't look at me! It, it was that young sort of girl who did it, not I. No one has proven that yet. I would have provoked the man if you don't need to. At this stage, I need to gather information, blah blah, as a lawyer, blah blah, being alone together. Um, Mbami son. Yes, what is it? It's, I mean, um, Naruhodo san? I'm really starting to wish we made Elias Rutaro Sisado. Please tell the court why exactly you were present at the bathing spot with the victim in the first place, and why you were alone with her. Oh, well, no, that's not true. It wasn't like that at all. There were other people present. A detective who was guarding Miss Bread for starters. I was just asked to accompany Miss Bread as a companion, that's all. But let us be clear, at the moment of her death, you were alone together with the victim in the hut. You and no one else. The truth is, there is only one reason why this young woman accompanied Miss Brent on her bathing spot sojourn. It was to accuse the last chance to take the victim's life. No. Because, as we know, the following day we would extradite to British authorities to Shanghai. And the accused would never have an opportunity to dispatch her again. And we got the motive down out of the way. Kindly refrain from conjecture, counsel. <laughs> I believe we all have clear picture of this incident now. Despite her guilt being determined nine months ago, Miss Brett managed to avoid incarceration instead of continuing her research work at the university. Obviously, over that period, she and Ray would have encountered each other on a number of occasions. Seeing the, seeing the murder of the mentor for whom she had such great respect, enjoying such undeserved liberty. Yes, even if it was only temporary until Miss Brett's extradition to Shanghai. You can hardly blame Ray for her feelings of anger and resentment. Poor Ray. So, Your Excellency, if you could be so kind to pursue this exhibit. A photographic print that shows a scene at the crime immediately following the grim incident. Yo! Is that our bathing suit? Yo! Yes, thank you, counsel. A tragic image. As you can clearly see, there is nowhere within the hut that anyone else could have hidden. The dress. Our court will accept this photographic print as evidence. As I understand it then, the victim and the defendant were alone inside the beach hut at the time. This is deeply troubling, I must say. The finger of guilt points clearly, firmly at the defendant. Well, Your Excellency, naturally the prosecution has much more to its case. We attempt to prove the accused's appalling actions beyond all possible contention. To that end, I can confirm that we have multiple witnesses to the crime and damning evidence. Witness? Witnesses? But who? One of whom, I might add, is a highly respected police detective. Please don't tell me it's who I think it is. I assure you, the testimony of these witnesses will leave no room for doubt. Uh, please don't tell me who I think it is. Very well then, counsel. Bring forth your, your witness. 
I, Takatsushi Aoichi, have been wanting for this moment. Sorry? Oh, yes, I haven't forgotten that trial nine months ago here in this very courthouse. When that irrelevant little student boy utterly humiliated me. Ah, ah, ah. Ah, Rinosuke Naruhodo. Uh, yes? This insult to the Aoichi family name will never be forgotten. You've become conceited with age, Council, but the old have to stand aside and make way for the new. It's the way of the world. May you never forget that. Yeah! You couldn't grow that thing back in nine months' time? Strike the head of a samurai whose top knot has been cut, and the bell of the cultural enlightenment's told. Yes, on that fateful day, my former self died. The start of your own mini Meijin revolution? Are you modernizing as well, Council? Silence! Since I swore revenge back then, there has been a minor miracle atop my head. Observe the Aoichi growth. You see? You see the seed of hope sprouting forth on the barren expense of my crown? I think that tiny growth is trying to tell me something. Um, I'm afraid I can't really see. Where is hope exactly? I said silence! Today I face another Yokosuna of the Naruhodo clan? Well, I will vanquish you, and my victory will be fertilized with a seed of hope on top of my head. You have been warned. With that, the prosecutor calls you the witness to the stand. With that, we'll end the episode right here. Like and subscribe, Shokazuk69, I'm sending out.